Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is my review of Acolyte Season 1, Episode 5. But before I start, uh, it's been very productive this whole uh, month. One of the common ways to get me to shut up uh, when people don't like what I'm saying is to say, you have late books. Well, I basically have nothing left to do. Um, things have been sent to the printer, and the printer is doing as the printer does. <laughs> For example, I send them three books and they decide they want to do Impossible Stars 2 first, even though it sold the, the least amount. I'm guessing they chose that one to do first because it's easier. So a lot of people in the comments on the Indiegogo campaigns are like, why don't you give an update? It's, I don't like to say like, who I'm like, <coughs> <coughs> I hate the updates that say I'm going to do an update. Right now things are kind of out of my hands literally so um i should be getting like a thumbs up like we have impossible stars going to print next whatever tuesday and then i'll announce that and then with jawbreakers forever and first kill and so on and so forth um so uh yeah so just been uh adding a subplot to rock and roll ninja 2 and then just answering if it's in a uh, regular not italics that means i did it uh, so I already did this and I need to do this so um, and I'm still working my way through devotion because Jonathan Majors is just a complete clown like he was an industry plant 100% um, Industry plant is when they just kind of create you uh, kind of like JLo um, but uh, anyway, so um, uh, I've been commenting on Acolyte, but I actually haven't seen much of it I've been commenting on the comments of it, uh, commenting on the reviews or quote reviews unquote, which I'm going to give a new description. But as far as seeing it, I've only seen like the first, I don't know, 10 to 15 minutes of the first episode. Uh, I just thought it was really boring, so I stopped watching it. So that was it. Uh, I followed all of the very calm and rational coverage of it by... Uh, <laughs> various YouTube channels um, and I watched two of the I'm not gonna call them reviews I'm going to call them audience capture performances audience audience capture is a concept of when you're running a channel the audience kind of leads you in one direction with positive or negative feedback and at some point they've done that for so long that you are captured by them they control your channel um, so you are only allowed to say what they want to hear so I would say at this point 2024 most at least the popular uh, YouTube geek channels are uh, audience captured so you're gonna hear the one allowed point of view on a couple dozen sites so what happens and it's uh it's very tiresome <laughs> Um, is every time I say something that's not the single approved opinion I get people freaking out saying I betrayed them returning oh I don't want your books anymore uh, nothing's changed nothing's changed over the last seven years of having this channel I say things that you're not allowed to say people freak out they try to punish me and then five years later it's common knowledge so I'll say it now and in five years when it's safe to say you can say it so uh, it was pretty good I liked it just fine um, uh, the only reason I watched it is because uh, a lot of clips have popped up on uh, YouTube specifically of the several uh, fight scenes in this episode and I was like looks pretty good so uh, my review is mostly knowing these characters through very over-the-top audience capture performance quote reviews unquote I understand the general gist. Uh, there's a <coughs> there's a person killing Jedi's. Uh, there's some twins. Um, the uh, there's various various lesbians. I think that's uh, yeah. Just go ahead and put that on Wikipedia as the first paragraph on the acolyte page. But um, I wouldn't say I was lost or didn't know who any of these characters are. I've watched a couple dozen reviews of this show, so like I get it. Um, and I gotta say, uh, I liked it. I liked it just fine. It was an action-packed 
episode. The action was good. Um, and <laughs> that's, that's kind of it. Um, yeah, it's hard to say. Like, uh, this was mostly just a bunch of action scenes and kind of stunning reversals. I've got the lightsaber. No, I've got it. No, it's broken. No, it's fixed. I've got the stun gun. No, I've got it. I've got stunned. Actually, I'm fine. Now I've got the stun gun that stunned me. Now I'm going to stun you with the stun gun that stunned me. Even though, let's be honest, it didn't last for very long. Um, I'm making light of it, but uh, I usually can't watch things through at once. Um, and I was able... The only interruptions were... I didn't realize that I have the version of Disney Plus that has ads. So every five minutes I'm watching a minute and a half of ads. Um, but... Yeah, I was actually just trucking along. It was it was a very easy episode. While the first one, I just couldn't take it. And I was shocked when I quit. And it said... Because you know how sometimes like the first episode of a show will be double length? And I'm not, I'm not just talking about how they will release like the first two episodes. I'm talking about like the first episode itself. And I was like, oh God, this has been going on forever. And I think I was like 12 minutes in. And um, I just said, it, it's like... Uh, you know, your mom, <coughs> your lesbian aunt, and her girlfriend of the month made a Star Wars show. Like, that's what the first episode and pretty much everything um, I heard about it so far. But this was good. I've been watching the trajectory of normies on uh, TikTok. Um, and when the first two episodes came out, universally, I'm talking about channels that do reviews and just regular people, everyone said, uh, these first two episodes were pretty mid. I'm going to watch the third one to decide whether I quit or not. And what I think happened, because like I said in a community post, like anti-SJW YouTube channels and the, that community are being absolutely clowned. And it's specifically for the key Adi Mundi thing, which was, how do I call it? Is it a work? I mean, Star Wars Theory knows that Legends canon is not canon. So it feels like he was the one that was really making a huge deal about it. But it was like a trading card included with a CD-ROM in 1999. G-Canon is the only pre-Disney canon that still counts. And G-Canon is only the movies themselves, not the merchandise. Not something you bought at Barnes & Noble. Not something you got for your birthday from your aunt. Like, it's literally the movies itself. The actual movie, not the merchandise. And the Clone Wars TV show. So, that that made anti-SJW, Star Wars, YouTube, community, whatever, look really, really dumb to basically everyone. Um, so, what happened is... And it's like that analogy I made about that show, The Gentleman. You can have someone you don't like, but if you torture him <laughs> and you just degrade him mercilessly, it flips it. So now you're on his side because it just went it just went way too fucking far. And here's the deal. If this show is so awful, why do they keep mentioning like four things that if you added them all together would be like 48 seconds of... Uh, screen time out of the first four episodes so uh just a couple call outs i will say as i as i look at these things um again i'm not an expert so i'm going to say a lot of this guy this girl so this guy this guy is it he is him like you can build a whole franchise around this guy i know he's from some netflix show i never watched and he had to learn english to play this and everyone's saying, like, oh, man, that's such a shame that he had to, like, he just wasted it. But, like, he's good. He's really freaking good. Uh, this girl, who I just found out is uh, Lara from Logan, really cool fight scenes, really cool. Like, this was a cool character as far as I can tell. Um, this guy, okay, a couple things, couple things. Um, if you read, like, uh, all those books about the making of, you'll see all of these designs. And it's the designs that didn't make it. And there's tons of stuff like this. Like, this is the type of stuff that you're like, oh, that's cool. And it doesn't get chosen, and you kind of know why. Like, uh, at what 
at one point, somebody elbows. I think it's her. She elbows this, and like it just. At first, I thought it fell apart, and then later it's intact, so I guess it just fell off. But it looks cheap. It looks janky. It looks edge lord. Like it just doesn't work. I think even worse is that it led to some what I call coffee breath humor. Coffee breath is like really bad office humor, like her dur, and you just kind of gotta laugh because it's your coworker and you can't just like clown him. But like, <sighs> Smilo Ren is kind of funny the first time you hear it. When you have to hear it 20 or 30 times, because every time you hear something that's just a little bit funny, it's half as funny the next time. So calling him Smilo Ren, which is kind of like, oh, yeah, because he's, he's got a smile. It's kind of funny calling him discount uh what's his name uh the guy who played the flash that was never funny and holding the funeral like again this is coffee breath this is like your co-worker with coffee breath it's like hey, the local sports team sucked so we're gonna burn the coach in effigy and have a funeral for the mascot at the parking lot of the grocery store and it's hosted by the 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 wacky uh, shock jock local like it's that like okay we get it real funny so um uh good action um uh now i want to talk about the reviews because i've kind of talked about them but i want to review this episode or show you what it's like and i'm going to review you the last time you went to the grocery store so it goes like this okay so this idiot had spaghetti sauce but no noodles like what kind of a moron doesn't understand that goes together so he gets into his stupid car and he drives across the shitty city he lives in to a grocery store and what do you do in the parking lot what do you do you park closest to the door well this moron thought he had a close parking spot but then when he started walking there was one that was closer that he didn't even see. Like, how do you not see it? You just drive down all the things and then you see it. Then he goes inside, and instead of just getting the five things he needs, he just kind of wanders around and looks at things and changes his mind. Oh, I didn't want this. I, I want this. I want uh, ravioli instead. It's like, do you have a brain in your head? Like, do you remember you were going to make spaghetti? And that's it's just that type of thing. It's like... Everything is stupid if you say it like it's stupid. Like, that's not a review. Again, that's what I call an audience capture performance. Your channel is audience captured, and that's working out for you in some regards. Uh, in regards to making money, it's probably doing quite well. In regards to being able to express yourself as an individual, no. <laughs> you know what the expectations are. You cannot veer from them, not even two degrees off. You have to say, essentially, you are handed a script. Not literally, but you know. You know. So even if it's good, you can't say it's good. You have to be like, you have to, you have to be like so pressed. Like, oh, I guess it wasn't the worst thing ever. Oh my gosh. Your life is so rough. But anyway, um, overall, from what I saw in the of part of the first episode and what I heard from review channels that I actually trust overall it doesn't seem like it's a great show but this was a pretty damn good episode and um, it's going to get especially normies to go ah you know the start was a but that episode 5 was really good and you kind of expect like episode 7 or 8 will kind of also be kind of huge um, but uh, yeah um, so for someone who just kind of watched it just because I saw some cool action scenes on TikTok, uh, I was very happy with it. Will I watch the next episode? Eh, not really. <laughs> I do not care about the twins. I mean, that is so, it's so insipid. <laughs> like, that's just, it's not even a plot element. Like, that's the story. It's like, they're twins. One's good and one's evil. It's like, come on. I know Star Wars is like a fairy tale, but like, that's too much of a fairy tale. Like, that's dumb. At one point, one of them is like, cuts off her hair. It's like, oh my gosh, now she looks like the other one. 
Except for, oh, wait. <laughs> like, it's just like a perfect match. Okay, there's dumb stuff in there. There is, there is stuff to criticize, but... It's like, spaghetti is on aisle five. Why are you even on aisle one? Are you a moron or are you retarded? <laughs> like, actually, it's kind of fun, but for some reason that makes my jaw hurt. Like, doing that, like, overacting, just like, everything is terrible. Um, but, uh, oh, yeah, and I thought the actor for, I don't even know his name. They just say Smilo Ren all the time. Um, he was real good. Like, really, really good. So anyway, uh, go check it out. I mean, just for the fight scenes. Um, I kind of want to do a channel of just this guy who's just like... And then, the, then, then this idiot goes to the dentist and he's got a cavity. It's like, just brush your teeth. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to audience capture performance review. Like, just, just like life. I'm just going to go to the street and just like yell at a pothole. Oh, oh, so there's just, the, the ground is just so saturated under you that you just give up and collapse. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That'd be fun. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, just, just, just everything like that. It's, that, that's, that's the new thing. Audience capture matters with T-Boy Sack. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Bye.